Hello and welcome to this OncLive Peer Exchange Panel discussion titled Evolving Strategies for Advanced Colon and Rectal Cancer. Now more than ever, we are witnessing improvement in both long-term survival and quality of life as our management strategies for patients with advanced colorectal cancers continue to evolve rapidly. I am joined today by a group of experts in the field of gastrointestinal oncology. Together, we will examine the research presented at the 2018 ASCO annual meeting. We'll talk about how these new data may shape the way we manage advanced colorectal cancer in the clinic. I am Dr. John Marshall, Chief of the Division of Hematology Oncology at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital, Professor of Medicine and Oncology at Lombardi Comprehensive Cancer Center of Georgetown University, and the Director of the Otto J. Ruesch Center for the Cure of Gastrointestinal Cancers in Washington, D.C. I am joined today by an incredible faculty, and our faculty begins with Dr. Gabriella Kirian, Clinical Research Director of Gastrointestinal Medical Oncology at the University of Washington Medical Center, Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Washington School of Medicine, and Medical Oncologist for the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance in Seattle, Washington. Gabby, welcome. Next, Dr. Marwan Faki, Professor of Medical Oncology and Therapeutics Research, Medical Director of the Clinical Research Unit, and section head of GI Medical Oncology at the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center in Duarte, California. Dr. Bert O'Neill, Professor of Medicine, the Joseph W. and Jackie J. Cusick Professor of Oncology and Director of Phase I and GI Oncology Programs at the Indiana University School of Medicine in Indianapolis, Indiana. And Dr. Wells Messersmith, Professor and Head of the Division of Medical Oncology and Co-Leader of the Developmental Therapeutics Program and Associate Director of Translational Research at the University of Colorado Cancer Center in Aurora, Colorado. Thank you guys so much for joining us and let's get started. Gang, so just a couple of days ago there was an announcement that they've changed the screening guidelines uh, for colorectal cancer, moving it earlier to 45 later to 85. Anybody want to tell me why, why we did this? Bert, what happened here? Uh, well, my understanding is the American Cancer Society looked through their data. I, I'm not sure for what time period, but came to the conclusion that there, are, there has been a real increase in incidence of colon cancer in people under 50. So, so the shift was there. I, I think this is something I, I feel like I've noticed, although it's always hard when you're at an academic center to know what's referral bias versus a real trend, but uh, you know, I think this is, this is probably a real thing. Is everybody seeing this? Everybody seeing younger patients in your clinic? No, absolutely. Uh, we even see teenagers mm. um, with uh, newly diagnosed, especially distal colorectal cancer, mm -hmm. rectal and then sigmoid colon, and it's, it's a very perplexing uh, situation because we don't really know what's causing this. Yeah, is this Starbucks coffee? Is it cell phones? What's going on? Why, why are these young people getting... Uh, uh, coffee's supposed to cut down your cancer. Oh, that's cancer. right. Coffee's good. That's right. <laughs> Thank goodness. So, so uh, I think we're seeing the same alarming trend as well in our practice, and uh, not only 40s, but, but definitely we're seeing 30s. And uh, I'm not really sure if it's the body mass index, uh, certainly the lifestyle changes. Uh, people are, uh, frankly, more obese. And, uh, but what is also alarming is that we see some fit patients who come to our practice in their 30s and 40s who have um, you know, rectal sigmoid cancer and there's no significant family history. You do the genetic workup and you don't find anything. So uh, my understanding is there has been a rise of almost about a 1% per year, almost in the last decade or two in, in uh, colorectal cancer in patients less than 50. So this is, I think, overdue. Uh, I think this is a good thing to, to be able to offer screening earlier. Yeah, so I, I, my patients tend to be not obese. They're the fit, you know, healthy exercising group. I sort of joke that they're the marathon running, cardboard eating people who are all of a sudden showing up. Mm -hmm. and, and they are in their 20s and 30s. So else does moving this to 45 do any good? I'm not sure. I think if anything, it will uh, increase awareness. I, I think one of the issues with younger people, um, both the patients themselves and their medical providers, is that they have um, symptoms that, as a physician, we consider worrisome, 
um, such as rectal bleeding or change in bowel habits, and they're told, oh, you're, you're too young to have colorectal cancer. This is just a hemorrhoid, mm. and don't worry about it. Mm. And so I think in the younger patient population, there's often um, a pretty harmful de delay in diagnosis. And I, I've seen younger people, uh, and I agree, we're seeing more and more of these younger patients who've had symptoms sometimes for years and really haven't been taken seriously because the level of suspicion was so low. So if, if anything else, this will raise awareness. Um, you, you know, colonoscopy, it, it's, it's a reasonable test, it's expensive, it's invasive, and, and barely uh, over half of Americans get it according to the guidelines. So, and really, does it really fit what a screening test exactly, is meant to be? It's supposed to be cheap and non-invasive, exactly. and it certainly is neither of those. Yeah, so I think, to me, the most exciting data that's come out uh, recently are some of these blood-based markers and other things that not only screen for colorectal cancer, but can screen for a whole bunch of cancers non-invasively and cheaper. And I think that's really where we should put in our resources. Yeah, the, the president and I tweeted out uh, sort of the same thing that I, this actually, I'm unhappy about this. I think this is sort of throwing a bone to the problem. And what I think we need is investment in research is to figure out why these people are getting it because it, it'll pick up a few more people, but it's not going to pick up that teenager, the, you know, the 20 year old, the 30 year old. I agree totally with the awareness, but we really need to study this and figure out what's going on. And my hope would be that uh, what we learn from this group of people, if we can actually figure out what's inciting all of this, that we would learn new biology about colon cancer and maybe affect screening overall. So fingers crossed on that.